Okay. Now, what we are going to see is a probabilistic view of linear regression. What happens uh, when you think of linear regression as if there is some uh, probabilistic model that generates our labels, right? So, that is what uh, uh, that is what we are going to look at. Uh, so, we have already looked at uh, you know estimation in general in an unsupervised setting where we have seen maximum likelihood Bayesian methods and so on. Um, but now we are going to think of you know our um, uh, linear regression also as in some sense an estimation problem um, which means that there should be some probabilistic mechanism that we are going to assume that generates something that we are seeing right. So, what is that we are going to assume? Well, in the linear regression problem you have the data points in d dimension the labels are in real numbers um, and of course, you have a data set which I can write as x1 y1 dot 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 xn yn. This is the data set. Now, the probabilistic model that we are going to assume is as follows. <clears throat> we are going to assume that the label is generated as follows. The label given the data point is generated as w transpose x plus some noise epsilon. What does this mean? This means that I do not, I am not trying to model how the features themselves are generated. I am just trying to model the relationship between features and the labels in a probabilistic way. <clears throat> and what is the probabilistic mechanism that generates the labels if I give you x? Well, what we are going to posit or hypothesize is the following. So, if I give you a feature, then there is an unknown but fixed w which is not known to us. So, this is the parameter of the problem. So, this is unknown uh, but fixed and this is in Rd and whenever a, a feature is seen, you do a w transpose x. Uh, but then your y is not exactly w transpose x. So, this is the structure part of the problem. Now, we are going to explicitly say there is also a noise part to the problem. So, we are adding some noise to this w transpose x and that is this epsilon, right. So, this epsilon is noise um, and this noise is we are going to assume is a Gaussian distribution with 0 mean and some known variance sigma square, right. So, this is Gaussian. Gaussian, right. So, um, so now what we are saying is that our data set every y i was generated according to this process. Somebody was gave us x i and then to get the y i there is an unknown but fixed w using which w transpose x i was generated and then a noise got added and we are only seeing the noisy version of w transpose x i where we know that the statistics of this noise is 0 mean and some va known variance sigma squared. All that is known, right. So, but the only thing that is unknown for us is w. We do not know w. So, which means now we can view the whole thing as an estimation problem, right. So, now we can view, can view this as an estimation problem. What are we trying to estimate? Well, we are trying to estimate the w, which, which, which after adding noise affects our labels, right. So, once we have put down a model as to how the data is generated, at least the y is given x is generated and we have an unknown parameter. Now, we already know what some methods to estimate, come up with estimators. And, and the simplest method that we have already seen, uh, the solution approach to this problem is um, as you must have already guessed is just the maximum likelihood approach, right. So, now I want to understand uh, the same problem, but then in a maximum likelihood context and see what comes out of it, right. So, which means uh, the standard maximum likelihood problem, I am going to write the likelihood, right. So, the likelihood uh, function is going to look like this. Let us call this x. Now, what is the parameter of interest? Well, the parameter of interest is w, uh, but then the likelihood function also depends on the data x1 to xn and y1 to yn. Because this is the observed data points, we are observing this. 
and then we are treating this as if it's a function of w though it's also a function of the data points and the labels but then we are going to treat it as a function of w and then we will try to find that w that maximizes our you know likelihood of seeing this but then before that uh, what is this likelihood itself right um, now as usual the iid assumptions hold uh, in a probabilistic model that is x1 y1 is independently generated right the y1 is independently generated of y2 and so on and they are all from the same Gaussian distribution, right? So basically, this is going to be product of i equals 1 to n. Now, what is the <coughs> chance that I see a particular yi for a given xi? Well, we know that every yi given xi is generated according to w transpose xi, which is a fixed quantity. There is nothing random there. And then you add a random noise. But this noise is a zero mean noise with a certain variance. So if I add a constant fixed quantity W transpose Xi to the zero mean Gaussian, just the mean gets shifted. The variance spread is fixed, but just the mean moves around by adding a constant. Right? So you have a zero mean Gaussian, I add 5 to it, it becomes a Gaussian with mean 5. The variance is still the same. right? So it is exactly the same thing here. Now I have added W transpose Xi to this zero mean Gaussian for the ith data point. So now that would be a Gaussian distribution with mean W transpose Xi and variance sigma squared, which we are assuming is known. So now this would then be the likelihood can be written as the density of E, uh, which looks like E power, you know, W transpose Xi, which is the mean uh, minus what I observe, which is Yi squared by 2 sigma squared uh, and of course with uh, 1 by square root 2 pi sigma though that is constant, it does not really matter in our uh, in our maximization as we will see. Good. So, once we have put down this likelihood, I can now do the log likelihood, log L of W uh, with respect to the same parameters x1 to xn, y1 to yn. Uh, we want to do the logarithm because it is hard to deal with products, it is easier to deal with sums. So, this is sum over i equals 1 to n the log cancels the exponential. So, this is minus, you know, W transpose Xi minus Ya squared by 2 sigma squared to 1 by square root 2 pi sigma. Now, remember, we want to think of this as a function of W. Xs are constant, uh, sigmas are constant, everything else, Ya's are constant, right? So, it is only a function of W and we want to see which W maximizes our likelihood or log likelihood, which means I can equivalently equivalently uh, w star I mean to get the best w I could have maximized um, uh, so uh, the I mean I want to maximize over w sum over i equals 1 to n I am going to remove I do not care about these variables these are just constant scalings these are known sigma square is assumed to be known so these are constants I do not care about them I will just hold on to the other guys, right? So, this is just W transpose Xi minus Ya square. Of course, the minus is there. Now, this is equivalent to minimizing over W sum over I equals 1 to N W transpose Xi minus Ya square. Now, this minimization problem is something that we have already encountered, right? So, this is exactly the linear regression problem with squared error that we already put out, which means we know the solution to this, right? So, so basically, what is the solution to this? Well, then uh, the W hat ML as an estimator is exactly same as our W star, which we already know is XX transpose pseudo inverse XY from our previous discussion about linear regression. Now, it is great that, you know, we started with a completely different technique uh, of looking at things, which is by thinking of a probabilistic mechanism for generating y given x and then did the most natural thing, which is to look at a maximum likelihood approach and out comes a solution, which is exactly same as the linear regression solution, right? So, what is the conclusion and, and, and it, it, it merits uh, you know, separate writing here because in some interesting points can be made. Um, the conclusion is that maximum likelihood 
um, estimator uh, assuming and this is the most important part zero mean Gaussian noise is exactly same as a linear regression with and again this is the important part with squared error. <clears throat> we could have either solved the linear regression part with squared error or we could have treated this problem as a maximum likelihood problem with Gaussian noise, with zero mean Gaussian noise and these both are exactly equivalent. These both are equivalent is, is an important thing to understand because what exactly makes them equivalent is the choice of squared error when we started by looking at linear regression where we did not really justify squared error that much. We just said that well we'll start with squared error because it looks like an intuitive thing to do, do, do I mean look at. Um, now we are saying well more than just intuition it has a very well probabilistic uh, backing as well right. So we are saying that if we chose squared error to solve the linear regression problem it is as if we are implicitly making the assumption that there is a Gaussian noise zero mean that gets added to our labels that corrupts our labels. Now these two are both important to understand right. So if I had changed my noise if there is reason to believe that my noise was not Gaussian then it would not be the same as solving the linear regression problem with squared error right. So the noise statistics or the density that you are assuming about the noise impacts essentially the loss function or the error function that we are using in our linear regression. That is the connection that I want you to make here right. So for example if I had given a different noise for instance if there if I tried a different noise like a, a Laplacian noise or something like that right. So I am just giving you an example uh, then no longer you would end up with a linear regression with squared error these two would not be equivalent anymore. It would be equivalent to a different loss function right. So in fact in if, if I mean just for completion sake if you used a Laplacian noise then it would be as if you are uh, you are looking at the absolute difference between W transpose X A and Y A and then summing up over them and that would be the problem that you are actually trying to solve. So uh, because the Laplacian uh, PDF has an absolute value sitting at the top of exponential e power minus absolute value of uh, W transpose X i minus Y i it, it, it kind of falls down sharper than the Gaussian distribution. Uh, but but that is not the important point. The important point is that choosing a noise means implicitly choosing an error function and vice versa choosing an error function means implicitly choosing a noise. So that is the first connection that we want to make which is which is important so good so we have made that connection. The question is um, is this the only thing that we gain um, or are we gaining anything else by looking at this from a probabilistic viewpoint. Well the answer is yes this is an important conclusion that we are drawing that you know if you view your W as an estimator then you know you can connect the noise and the loss. But um, now what else have we gained? Right. So, what else, uh, what else have we gained by, by viewing this in a probabilistic way? Uh, well, the most important thing that we might have uh, perhaps gained is that now we can study, you know, properties of estimator. especially to W hat m right. So this is an important uh, you know gain that we have when we view uh, a, a learning as a probabilistic mechanism because the moment you put probabilistic learning becomes estimation and once you have an estimator then you can you know bring in all the machinery that we know about understanding estimators. We have already seen uh, some kind of uh, understanding what are good estimators and what are perhaps not. So now what we are going to see is can we somehow use this notion of estimators that uh, somehow can we use some properties of these estimators um, or some other way of trying to do estimation to understand this problem of linear regression better. And that is what uh, we will do next.